Hello, and welcome to another edition of Foundations in R via the Friends of Tracking initiative. In the last part, we walked through loading in shots information and created a very basic Shiny application that shared the same design as our Shiny's Hello World example. I originally mentioned that there would be three parts to the R Shiny series, but I'm in the process of trying to create videos of shorter length while still covering the core uh, concepts. It's a, it's a learning experience for me to understand what is the optimal YouTube video. So thank you for bearing with, uh, thank you for bearing with me. Um, if you have any suggestions, uh, please write them in the comments below. In today's lesson, we will review the UI and server aspects of the Shiny application and create an interactive shot map that uh, respects or is filtered by various different um, meta information around the shot, most notably the XG of the shot and the location from which the assist occurred. To follow along with uh, today's lesson, um, please go to the uh, Foundations in R project within the Friends of Tracking GitHub repository and download the StatsBomb uh, Shiny Part 2 R example. The only dependency that you need to be able to run this script in its entirety is the draw pitch uh, R file, which will allow you to visualize a field. Um, and also the stats bomb data, which you can download via the link below here. So um, we're back in R and um, this is going, if you did follow along with the last video, uh, the part one of Shiny, it's going to seem like most of the code is the same, which it is. Uh, the only differences are there was a small bug in uh, getting the assist location um, in line 180 uh, where I accidentally had team one uh, listed here instead of team two. Um, and uh, the rest of the differences are starting line 229 onward. So uh, everything should be the same up until shot shiny final where we are defining the is assisted uh, variable. So if we look at the data frame shot shiny final, just to recap what we are going to be working with for our application, we see that the columns that we have, the variables, are the information around the team, the match, the player uh, who took the shot, where the shot came from, the kind of shot it was, the XG of the shot, um, if the shot had a uh, assist ID or a key pass ID, uh, made sure to get the location of the assist, which is going to come in handy uh, later. And uh, some information around the competition, um, teams that played, and also this concept of XG diff, which was uh, relative to the actual goals that a team scored and the expected goals they should have scored uh, based on the summation of all shots. Um, how well did they perform or how well did they not perform? So this is the data set that we are going to be using to create our interactive shot map. So before I go into the actual creation of the application, I just want to review these four lines of code. Uh, where I am initializing a data frame that contains uh, each point within a field that is of 120 units in length and 80, unit, 80, 80 units in width. So if we run the lines of code from 229, from lines 229 to lines 232, um, we're going to see that we have a data frame of about 9,801. Uh, values and each row is going to be uh, one um, element within the uh, field. So any XY location on the field that is being segmented by uh, a unit is going to be found here. This is going to be really helpful for us when we create a interactive map that aims to uh, filter the shots based on where the assist came from. So you'll see how this uh, Campo coordinates variable um, gets used within our Shiny application. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, one last thing is uh, make sure that you have run, uh, installed the MGCV package. 
you haven't done it uh, yet, I'm just writing the code for you to be able to install that package. Uh, and then make sure you load it into your environment. Uh, I'll show you when we review the code uh, where I'm actually calling uh, this library. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run my Shiny application side by side with the code so I can step through each element to give you a very uh, comprehensive overview of what uh, each line of code is doing and how it's being reflected into the front end or the application that you end up seeing. OK, so um, before we uh, look into the code, let's just first look at what we're seeing here in the application. We have a title screen or we have a title text. Sorry, uh, we have some little helper information, some meta information that complements or is a bit descriptive to the title. And we have a bunch of different uh, variables in which we are attempting to filter data with. So competition, season, the, the type of team it is. Um, the shot type, the shot outcome, uh, the foot, and then on the right hand side are your more notable filters that we are going to use, which are the um, XG value of the shot and a map where uh, gives us a bit of a brush where we can identify where the assist came from. And the second portion of the application, we see uh, a map which just gives us a blank soccer field, football field, um, and uh, a table here with zero rows at the moment. So going by the code one by one, let's step through and see what every piece is doing, what every component is doing. So the fluid page, again, um, reviewing from last part, is just the blank canvas that's going to be the container for which all of these different elements exist. The title pane and help text um, here correspond to the title and help that you see here. The sidebar layout, as we can see, the entire length of the code goes starts here and ends all the way at the bottom, basically, of the entire UI, is the canonical way or the canonical layout for being able to uh, show shiny applications. Effectively, it allows us to define a space where we are going to uh, provide inputs and allows us to provide a main panel, which is defined here, which allows us to provide outputs. So within our main panel, we have uh, a plot being outputted and also some text that's being outputted. Uh, the shot plot corresponds to the map that you see here, the field that you see here, and the selected points um, output, which is being outputted as text, could also be outputted as a table. Uh, I just chose verbatim text here uh, in this case. Um, selected points here is referencing the little grade area here where we right now are not seeing any rows of information. Um, with the input section, uh, we see that it's being defined by a uh, grid layout or a method called fluid row. And we see only one fluid row being defined. It goes the length uh, of the entire code of the UI except for the main panel. And fluid row is just trying to create space within the fluid page where everything that exists within the parentheses of fluid row are going to be of the same row uh, level. So you can see both of these columns are uh, starting at the same row height. Um, and these columns here are defined here. So one column is defined here and our second column is defined here. So the first column is uh, telling us that let us have a width of five. Um, the well panel is just letting the application know that everything that's going to be within this column is going to be uh, having this light gray background. And what we put in this well panel are going to be different sort of uh, inputs. Now, I'm not going to go into too much depth with the inputs, but if you want to learn more information, uh, I highly suggest visiting the our Shiny uh, webpage that shows about all of the different widgets that you can actually have to be able to customize the kind of inputs that you want to give into your application. 
So um, this link obviously is going to be in the uh, description of this video. And if you do follow this tutorial, it shows you how you can create uh, each one of the inputs that you see up above in this uh, screenshot. So um, what I'm doing here in the left hand side in the first column is creating a space for inputs to be provided with respect to competition, season, team, shot type, shot outcome and the shot foot. The main things to remind you from the first uh, lesson is that uh, we've created a label. A select competition corresponds to the label of the input that we see here and um, the choices that are provided, the whole list of choices that a user can provide from, that can select from, is created based on uh, some sort of information, some sort of vector that we provided here. I'm providing it to the uh, unique competition names that are found within the Shot Shiny final uh, data frame. And lastly, the selected um, parameter is going to let us know which value it's going to select on default when we run the application in the beginning. Um, the select input uh, is just explaining what kind of input it's going to provide. So you can see most of these are done through select input and they mostly have uh, a drop down for me to create uh, or select the type of competition I want. Um, the ones that don't have a drop down like team, shot type, shot outcome, they are still of the type of select input, except the only difference is that uh, I'm allowing for, or this application is allowing for multiple selections to be selected. If uh, the user wanted to see uh, multiple different teams, maybe Sociedad, Atletico Madrid and Barcelona, they could visualize different teams in the shot map below. Or maybe they wanted to look at one team, but uh, you uh, look at many different types of shots. So that's the only reason why um, these select inputs are slightly different than the ones that have this drop down arrow. It's only just because I'm allowing for multiple inputs. So uh, the checkbox group input uh, behaves in a very similar fashion. Um, in this case, you don't need to specify that you will have multiple inputs. Uh, you can by default, and it follows the same methodology of creating a label and giving it some choices and, uh, give, and uh, telling the application what choices should be selected when we start the application. Um, one last uh, thing to remember is that uh, the first element in each of these methods is the variable name of the input that we are going to use in the server part of the code. So the second column is going to be a slider input, so different from the first two first two types. Uh, here we are providing a slider, um, and the plot output is going to be the location where we are going to define where the assists are coming from. And that is going to have the variable uh, assist map. And the way that we make the map interactive is we provided this um, parameter called brush. And we're going to give brush a input name called assist brush, which we are going to call then in the server side. The server side is where all of the magic happens. Um, and is going to take into account all of the inputs that we've provided uh, from the UI. So the key components within the server for this application are observe event, uh, reactive values, observe, and also the rendering component. Um, so to go by, uh, to go through this step by step, what we see here is um, that the observe event is looking into input comp and input season, which correspond to the select competition input and the select season input. And what it's doing is it's going to be observing uh, this input and uh, through each observation, um, it's going to record the variable of the competition as comp. And then it's going to give me the season options that uh, I have available to me or to the data set 
uh, given the competition. The reason why I want to do this is because I want to be able to provide the correct list of uh, seasons based on the competition that I provide. So if we look at La Liga, we see that we have uh, many seasons available to us in data. Um, it's not uh, listed by year. Um, to be able to do that, you would need to create uh, a season variable and set that as a factor and then create the correct levels. I just haven't done that for this uh, um, for this tutorial. Um, but uh, what you do is if we look at what this the observe event is doing is that if we look at the competition and we look at the FA Women's Super League, we see that season has now changed and is only showing the two seasons that are relevant for the FA Women's Super League. If we switch back to La Liga, we see that we have all of the seasons that of data that we have for the La Liga. So that's what that observe event is doing. And season does something very similar is it takes into account the season and the competition, as we see here, input comp and um, season being uh, the filters for the unique teams that we find within our shot shiny final data frame and provides us all of the teams uh, that have competed or had a shot within a particular competition and a particular season. So what observe event does is um, it provides you with the ability to uh, create some sort of change in your application uh, based on some sort of trigger event. In this case, the trigger event is a change in the input or one of the inputs. Uh, before I go further, I want to reference um, two links. I'm going to put them in the description of this YouTube video. Uh, but these two links are going to give you a more comprehensive understanding of reactivity. Uh, reactivity is uh, the core of most Shiny applications, as most programmers consider Shiny reactive programming, uh, effectively being uh, the application is just listening to inputs, just like any other application, and then surfacing the correct outputs based on those inputs. Uh, within our Shiny, they call that reactive programming and um, this tutorial along with a comprehensive answer provided to a question posed on Stack Overflow should give a good understanding of what's going on with the different methods that you can use uh, in reactive programming in Shiny. So that's what observe event is doing, uh, simply just uh, changing another event uh, changing another input that is dependent on the input of another uh, input. Sorry if I've used input so many times. Um, the second part is the reactive values and the reactive values you can think of as a dynamic list that's generated based on the um, things that the end user is doing with the application. I wanted to use the word input again, but maybe I can't get around it. So based on the input that the user provides uh, through the application. And so values is just a, an empty list, uh, but is dynamically changing based on what the end user is doing when he interacts with, when he or she interacts with the application. So observe uh, is very similar to observe events, uh, but the only difference is observe event is primarily observing everything that's going on within the application. Um, and it's going to make modifications to a variable that has been defined outside of the scope of observe. So we've defined values outside of the scope of the observe uh, squiggly line and uh, parentheses. And so what this code is doing is it's going to make some sort of uh, changes to our values uh, dynamic uh, list that we've created via reactive values. Um, so what this line of code is doing, if we step through it, is it's providing us an if else. And this if else is uh, looking to see if we've provided an input to the assist map or not. Um, if we've not provided a value to the assist map, so if we've not actually created a, uh, a selection within this map, it's going to default to the else portion of the if else, and it's going to create a data frame within the dynamic list called values. And this data frame is going to be um, the shot shiny final data frame filtered based on 
the input that we got from the season, the input that we got from the competition, the shot types, the team name, um, the outcome of the shot, and the XG, uh, as long as it's greater than the minimum filter that's provided, uh, and less than the maximum filter that's provided, uh, based on the slider input for the XG of the shot. So what happens if we do select uh, some points with the assist? Let's actually first show what's happening on the map. So um, if we look at the shots for Barcelona, I believe they have the most data in this data set. We look at the shot types and we look at the goals that happened either with the left foot or right foot, we see a map of shots and the size of the circle is the XG. We also see uh, an output of all of the shots happening um, in our data set that we've provided for the 2017-18 season in La Liga. But let's see what happens if we select a portion of the map, uh, of the assist map. Uh, we want to see all of the shots uh, that occurred when the assist came from the right channel. So now we have a list of all these shots. Uh, they seem to be uh, either near, post, uh, near to the six yard box or far post. Um, and the shot map was reactive uh, or responsive to the input that we provided in the assist map. So what's going on here in the if condition is we are looking at uh, if the input of assist brush, which we defined here in our second column of the fluid row, assist map brush assist brush, if it's not null, uh, meaning if we actually have values that we can, if, if the brush has actually been used effectively, what we want to do is we want to get the values of uh, what we've selected relative to um, some data set. And that data set is going to be Campo coordinates uh, because that because Campo coordinates provides all of the coordinates all the XY locations of the stats bomb field. Uh, we want to assign the input of the brush to the Campo coordinates and make sure that the X variable is X and the Y variable is uh, Y. Um, so this line of code where we define X is going to be the list of uh, points that we have selected in uh, this brush. Now, if you are uh, going through this uh, piece of code yourself, what you can see is in the end of the app, I have something called output uh, dollar sign selected points with two lines um, hi or highlighted out, commented out. Uh, if you want to just play more around with the brush and understand how it's working, uh, I would suggest that you comment out the values DF and allow the X to be live to see what's going on. Uh, what's going on effectively is uh, what this would show you if you ran this piece of code, it would be if, uh, it would show you the points that were selected um, via the brush and then would give you the four uh, vertices or the four bounding points that bound the rectangle. Uh, this upper left corner, this upper right corner, the lower right corner and the lower left corner. Um, if you only want to see all the list of all points that were selected, just comment out the second line of code as well. So um, to go back to this, what's going on here is uh, X has defined all of the points, all of the XY points within this rectangle. The convex hull is uh, creating the four coordinates that uh, serve as the vertices of the uh, rectangle itself. And then here in shots to include, we are uh, creating um, an index of all of the shots in Shot Shiny Final, where the assist actually came from, where the key pass actually came from uh, a location inside of this box that we've defined here. And so that's why we load in the library called MGCV is because this library allows us to call this function called inout, which allows us to subset uh, points um, based on if uh, certain coordinates are inside of a bounding box or not. So shots to map is then just subsetting shot shiny final DF based on the shots 
uh, that were uh, occurring uh, from that had an assist where uh, the assist came from the box that we've defined here. And then lastly, we've defined values df as our data frame within the reactive uh, list or the dynamic list called values, which is effectively the same as values df if we did not assign any sort of uh, assist location to be filtered on. Um, but we are accounting for the location of the assist based on the fact that we are called based, based on the fact that we are filtering shots to map rather than shots shiny final. So uh, what this observe did was it created this values.df data frame that we can then use in our output shots plot. I guess I should just make a quick note to say that uh, the assist map is being rendered using HORI5, which is defined in the draw pitch uh, R file, uh, which is being used to interactively select where the assist is coming from. The output shot plot is rendering the actual plot of the shot map, and the output selected points is just rendering the text of all of the shots that uh, respect all of the filters that we've provided based on these both both of these columns. So that's effectively all of the components that go within a Shiny application or this Shiny application. Um, if you have any questions, please uh, reach out, please comment, and uh, I'll be happy to follow up uh, if there are any doubts. Uh, thank you, and I think this is going to mark uh, a break in the foundations in our series. I'm going to now focus on tracking data uh, as that is how the group is now gravitating towards. Um, if I do find some small snippets of uh, our code to share, uh, I'll definitely be putting that into the foundations in our GitHub, uh, even though I might not make a video about it. Um, thank you. The next video coming up is going to be about uh, utilizing GPS latitude longitude data sources for doing some simple uh, tracking data style analysis. See you guys next time uh, and thank you for watching.